London is the best city in the world to cook because you can get any ingredient from anywhere you want it's and you will get the best you want how do you use that to your benefit still keeping the ethos of the cuisine that you represent hmm. is what the challenge remains drumstick soup is a south indian vegetable it looks like a potato but the texture is entirely different stir fry concept but tore so it's like asparagus and uh, some bean is it yes What we have done here, Kapal, is we have taken the Peking duck as the inspiration. But that is a patri, and then we have a curry leaf chutney, and uh, then we have done a chutney with mustard okay. and cherries. This is delicious, Sri Ram. Thank you. Very good. Mm. What I love is the lightness of the butter and also the garlic there. What it's doing is it's allowing for the character of that lobster to shine. The his creation is more for the people who are connoisseurs of food. They love food. Like there are people they want to acquire a piece of art, but there are people they really want to, you know, enjoy, enjoy and they are connoisseurs of art. So we are planning to go down to Hyde Park. We are going to go down to some of the most beautiful museums in the world. So that's the coin over there. Mm. It's supposed to look like yeah. Horses on one end, cycles here, and uh, was that a Porsche? They just room past us. Costa di Nata. Okay. So which one should we try first? So that's a Gozleme. Gozleme. So basically, markets are like a range of different foods from across the world. Well, today I'm having a meal at a very special restaurant here. just down the road from St James Court in the same premises in fact this is Coilon which is run by my very dear friend chef Sri Ram so folks i'm in london as you know and uh, the one person that i had to meet in london and uh, who's been very instrumental for helping me a lot with my visit here to london is my friend chef Sri Ram good evening chef hi good evening kripa So the last couple of times we met Sri Ram uh, in Namma Uru, Bengaluru, but today we are in his kingdom. <laughs> at his beautiful uh, award-winning restaurant called Koilon. How many years is Koilon? We started in 99, so I think 24 years now. 24 years. Yes. And how many years uh, since the Michelin? This is the 15th year. 15th year of having a Michelin, Michelin star yes. constantly year yes. after year. Yes. So of course I'm spending the evening with Sri Ram and uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of good food. <laughs> and uh, we're also meeting uh, one of his friends Paresh Maithi, world renowned artist. You can see his art works on the wall here in our restaurant. So he'll be joining us shortly too. So so far in London of course I've been uh, doing what a typical tourist does and uh, visiting the sites, the monuments and today was a busy day. but uh, i think this is going to be the high point of my dining experience in london and also of course chef sri ram has been very instrumental in uh, helping us put together the uh, first ever food lovers meet up outside the country outside india that is at his other restaurant the bombay brasserie yeah absolutely for brunch tomorrow so you'll also see some of that hopefully the bombay brasserie is a large restaurant so it will be a brunch it will be a buffet brunch uh, and uh, so and you get to interact uh, with those guests and we also get to interact and get them to savor the food and a lot of the menu is inspired by your experience so we have taken a lot of dishes that you have kind of spoken about and tasted and thought it is a good idea to showcase them so we are going to recreate those on a buff on a, a brunch buffet So I th I think tomorrow is going to be a very exciting Fantastic. afternoon. I think today evening is going to be as exciting too. I've always heard of Koilon because when I worked with uh, Chef Sri Ram 23 years ago. Yes, actually not 23 Kripal. It's I think it's almost 26, 27 years. 27 years, years ago. <laughs> We'd all heard about this restaurant uh, that he was bringing to life, 
and so Koyalam has always been that um, you know that restaurant where one has heard about you know about Chef Sri Ram coming here and setting it up. So I'm really excited to be uh, dining here, dining here with him, and also with uh, the Paresh. legendary artist uh, Paresh Mehti. I've never met him before, but of course one is very familiar with his colorful canvases that you see here behind me, and also in the lobby of the Saint James Court. first time huh. so instead of just going with a standard um, tasting menu I'm, I'm trying to get a few dishes from our seafood tasting and our, our non vegetarian tasting menu okay so for you to see some interesting uh, stuff of what we do so as the course comes we will discuss each one of them all right fantastic okay? fantastic so a bit of surprise there a bit of surprise Drumstick soup, it's a South Indian vegetable mm. which grows on a tree. Mm. It's called a murume, also the other name, mm. and it's a radish kind of radish, or radish we call. And we've got some lentils and the baby crisp coriander. This is curly biscuit, it goes along with your soup. Please enjoy. Soup is not a concept, Indian concept at all. So we at the same time want to kind of uh, be a bit progressive in that term. So, huh. what that means is we have used drumstick, we have used lentil, for example. So every ingredient we have used is what we would use in the south of India or in India. In general. So that was, that is the whole approach, and then create an experience that ties up well with what will on and what South Indian West Coast food is. So, do you get things like drumstick and all easily here? They are all imported, so they oh, come they, from India. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Because you know this kernel is quite tender. Yeah. So we get very good quality. So we can be very specific. As long as we are very fussy about the quality we want, we can get what you we get want. You get it. You have a bit of pepper that goes into this yeah. for the warming. Correct. And what lentils would go into this? Just normal tour dal. Tour dal, togri Very simple. Very nice. Very easy. So out here, even the the spice mix would be prepared here in house. Yeah. Yeah. You don't buy anything ready made. So tell me when you like a Michelin star, right? You've had this for the last fifteen years. And before that, Quelon was still doing well, exceptional, etc. So is there pressure when you have a Michelin star? Uh, yes. Uh, in the sense that obviously when you get something you want to hold it, that's human nature, uh. especially when it's so recognized. But also the point is being in the business, being a chef, what you contribute to the culinary world, right? To the cuisine. Because I think we should also feel responsible to the cuisine, especially when you're outside the country and you represent mm. a cuisine. Mm. It's also important to make sure it is showcased properly and it should earn the respect it should. So I think there is pressure in multiple forms and Michelin becomes the cornerstone of those pressures and the and so you kind of keep those standards, but at the same time also understanding your your commitment to the cuisine. There are dishes that you would do the way it is, like korigas is an example. Mm. Right? You do korigas the way it is done. You don't, mm. you don't do any acrobatics with that. Correct. It's about how can you make the right. But like you will taste a black cod that we do today. That's not in the cuisine. We, that is very inspired by the Japanese black miso black cod, right? So we said it's a wonderful fish and we said how do we give it a South Indian treatment. Mm. So we just use tamarind, we use fenugreek, jaggery because we deconstructed the taste, flavor, texture of a miso pot and we mm. said how do we reinterpret this into being South Indian. Right? Mm. So that is progress because also I keep saying this always. For any art form to be relevant, it has to progress. And also today's accessibility has to be in place, right? For example, Correct. today you get ingredients much easier and London is the best city in the world to cook because you can get any ingredient from anywhere you want it's, and you will get the best you want. How do you use that to your benefit still keeping the ethos of the cuisine that you represent hmm. is what the challenge remains. So that also brings creativity. It brings its own pressure with it, 
because you want to do it right and it has to be relevant it should feel part of the mm. overall cuisine the plum garlic is very yeah. garlic There's a bit of heat there in that. Yeah. So that is the spiciest kapar. That's a green chilli heat. Yeah. Hmm. The ginger chilli is nice. Yeah. It's very good balance between the warmth of the ginger and the tamarind. This chutney is like a tomato chutney, huh? Yeah, tomato and onion. Oh, that's delicious. The chutney is, and I love the. Uh, Or garne of the curry leaf in this. Mm. See also the chutneys and the pickles tell you of the effort that the restaurant is putting into the. But it takes a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. After tasting the pickles, the wine, the tannins have been completely softened by the. Very interesting. I thought, I was worried that after tasting the pickle, it will demolish the wine. No, no. But. That's what happened. That is because it's not too spicy, and also because it is not too salty. Kripa. Wow. That helps. Black corn with the tamarind, the sweet and sour pork and honey. Okay. A signature dish of the chef. Raw masala with coconut and raw mangoes. Okay. On your right is the lobster with butter and pepper. Now tell me this uh, this lobster with uh, garlic. Garlic. So that's. A very, uh, very Western sort of treatment, Correct. right? So I thought it is very interesting because see what it does is Kripal. It gets the best out of the lobster, huh. and the sauce just complements. That's what I like about the dish. So we just thought we should do a version of it. So ours is slightly different in that sense because huh. our sauce is much lighter, huh. uh, less garlicky, not very buttery. So we try to keep, but that is the inspiration. That's the inspiration. I think I should make a beginning with the uh, lobster, right? Yeah. So the garlic in this is just like a very soft, correct, subtle undertone. If you will not even realize until you want to kind of get it. You know what I mean? Same thing with the butter. Because it's easy to make a food very tasty if you're throwing a lot of butter at it. See, That's what's interesting here is that the overwhelming character here is the slight sweetness of the lobster. Correct. Uh, that is the intent. Uh, that is the whole intent, right? And also, like this is one of our courses in a seafood tasting menu. Mm. So you get three different textures, three different tastes, three different heat levels. So I'm actually trying to serve a Southwest coastal cuisine on a plate. So I'm expecting you to experience that on that plate, right? So how do I do that? So that is my challenge. This is delicious, Sri Ram. Thank you. Very good. What I love is the lightness of the butter and also the garlic there. What it's doing is it's allowing for the character of that lobster to shine. So I'm sure there's a progression of flavors from the yeah. light to the slightly correct more impressionable and then correct. That's almost like a gussy of sort, is it? It's like the prawn rolls, so it's kind of got masala but not overwhelming masala. You know what I love about the black cod is the fattiness of that fish. Yeah. What I'm really tasting is the the character of the fish. Yeah. So the tamarind is there just in that edge. You're just tasting that edge of tamarind. We actually soak it in the marinade and the it's left overnight. Yes. And because we make the marinade not too thick, right? Because we don't need to be coated like a thick thing. Huh. Right? That's why we soak it in for it to take some of its character, more from the flavor profile point of view uh. than anything else. And then the way we cook it is uh. kind of at a very high heat, very quick, because you want it to cook very quickly, and then you get the flakiness, you want the juiciness. The trouble with this kind of fish, if you overcook it and if you don't cook it right, it can become rubbery. Become rubbery. Then it's not fun eating it. The spicing just complements the fish. Mm. Mm. The 
tomatoes in this. The curry leaf, the mustard. Yeah. This is like a konju roast. Yeah, correct. That's oh. what it is. That's exactly what it is. Mm. There's a certain sweetness here from the tomato and also a bit of the acidity that comes with it. And then the onions. The slight sweetness of the onions that have been roasted in this konju roast. That's the prawn roast. Delicious. It's been a wonderful progression of flavors from the very light lobster in the butter and garlic to that black cod with that edge of tamarind, a little bit of the warmth that comes from chili and that konju roast which is very reminiscent of what a traditional preparation would be like. What we have done here, Kupal, is we have taken the Peking duck as the inspiration. But that is a patri. And then we have a curry leaf chutney. And uh. then we have done a chutney with mustard okay. and cherries. Because cherries is very uh. much local English thing, right? Uh. So this is like trying to do indicative of so many things, right? And the eventual experience, of course, you will tell me what do you think about it, uh. is we are expecting you to eat this like you would eat your Peking duck. Peking duck. Right? And but at the same time, you an experience that is very different. So that's what we are trying to achieve here. How's your fish? Amazing. I think no place in this world uh. could beat Isiram black cod. Wonderful. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, the one and only Mr. Parish Maiti. Thank you very much. It's an honor to uh, share this table with you at. Sri Ram's wonderful restaurant, Koilon. You've known Sri Ram for many years and you've obviously known... More than known two decades. Two decades. More than two decades. Okay. And the food here, you've it's, known for how long? It's very genuine, uh, very authentic uh, and close to your heart. I think close to anybody's heart. Uh, That's why people appreciate. So is that your favorite dish there? Uh, there are many things are there, uh, but I can't finish that in this dinner. <laughs> Everything is it's very favorite to me, close to my heart. I feel at home. Wonderful. So the English would probably do a confit or something like that, whereas here he's done a duck roast from the backwaters of Alapi. Uh, what I am, correct. So this is the moment of truth, chef. The condiments here come as a very distant afternote. Correct. The patri is just the carrier of all that, right? Mm. And the idea is to the get patri is a vehicle to, to transfer that to your mouth. Yeah. To you know, what's interesting here is the combination, mm -hmm. that play of flavors between the peppery warmth of the duck roast and that piquant note of that mustard in mm -hmm. this. I mean, typically you will not expect to taste these flavors together. Correct. Exactly. Um, You're right. You know, what I find interesting here, Sri Ram, is there certain dishes here which are very evolved, very refined. But something like this duck roast, of course, it was interesting with the patari and with the condiments. And I'm just tasting that uh, duck roast by itself. It's very close to, let's say, a duck roast I would taste in a good toddy shop somewhere in the backwaters. That is the intent. Mm -hmm. That is the intent. Also, the texture of the duck. You've you not cooked your duck sous vide where it is so soft, soft and correct. Correct. melting. But that's not any game. Mm. Is not supposed to be that. Any game is supposed Delicious. to be meaty. Is supposed to have a huh. texture. Is supposed to have a flavor. So, Was so good. Uh, that's what it's supposed to do. As you said, that the spices are really you know helping the. Huh. The singer is the main thing and the orchestras, they are helping the singer to create the whole fusion. Mm. But yeah. the, the main power is the subject. 
the uh. intent is to give the true experience right here the main act uh, is the duck everything else is to add an extra twist turn experience uh, flavor whatever you may want to call it and surprise in the overall act of the overall dish, right? mix of that's things that's correct that's what it is like for example sometimes when you go to restaurants right you feel that you will be overwhelmed by what comes before you we've gone through three courses right yeah. we began with the moringa soup i had the tasting of the lobster the cod and the prawn and now the duck yes yeah, sure they presented well etc but in terms of it's not intimidating in the least it's not trying to be something that it isn't it doesn't seem contrived you get my point yeah it's kind of giving you the comfort of relevance comfort of understanding uh putting something new on the plate uh huh. but overall making sure that every meat every seafood everything that we cook is cooked with absolute perfection for you to get that experience of eating the right way it should be done and if it's a classical dish it connects if you've eaten that before it connects you there if you have not eaten that before we we hope and wish that you feel oh that was interesting that's interesting if i go to wherever that is from i want to taste that what is that wonderful that's what we are trying to do so the cellul and the dark the lamsha Jerusalem 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 Oh, that's a Talisari Biryani. 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 So, what is this this inspired by? By like a karam or? This one, yeah, correct. The that karam. Kind of, correct. Yeah. Exactly. The, uh, uh, got a a a very earthy mm. flavor. Mm. Mm. And it's got a crunchiness to it. Mm. So, it kind of, so, you know you are eating a different vegetable. Uh, and it's a new one. If, for somebody who has not tried. Mm. And if somebody has eaten this, Jerusalem artichoke before would have not tried it this way. It looks like a potato, but the texture is entirely different. Correct. And also, it has got an earthy flavor to it. It's got an earthy flavor to it, but let's say minus the starchiness that you will get in the Locasia. There's no starchiness at all in this. No, correct. 100%. It's almost like biting into a turnip of sort. But uh, minus yes. the pungency. It, correct. I was about to say. Without, without the, the pungency. pungency. Correct. Correct. Well, that's like a thorn, so, is it? Exactly. So I wanted you to try this because if you use asparagus, we use beans. Mm. Stir fry concept, but thorn. So it's like asparagus and uh, some bean, is it? Yes. This we eat. So see again, Kripa. This is, I mean, thorn, poriyal is ah. so common, right? Ah. So we said, let us give it a different treatment. We have put a little bit of pepper powder to it. Okay. And and we have put some lemon juice to it to finish it. So you blanch it and then toss it in the seasoning. No, no blanching. Straight cooking. Straight cooking. The asparagus even. Yeah. You But you maintain that green, that bright. Yeah, because you just cook it very quick. Hmm. You know, I feel serum uh, creation. Ah. Uh. in cooking is much more universal okay then i would say zonal although it started and the name sounded very zonal but his creation as i said is purely universal for the connoisseur of food mm. not the people they want to be hungry and eat Mm. The his creation is more for the people who are connoisseurs of food. They love food. Like there are people they want to acquire a piece of art, but there are people they really want to, you know, enjoy, enjoy and they are connoisseurs of art. See, it's a very simple yeah. dal. Very no, simple dal. No sushi to it. Well, in South you don't I, make sushi on dal. The hingu that you would use. Yeah. Where would you get the hingu from? From India. That is the beauty of this country, Gopal. You can get what you want. I can go with my fingers, my hands. No, sorry, I'm asking yeah, you at yeah, the end. Yeah, no. no, please. The best enjoyment, uh, the joy of food 
when you eat with your hand because that's the time you use your all five senses mm. all five fingers mm. and that is that creates a sensation in your mm. heart and soul mm. and your you know sense mm. which is very very important i feel mm. so i really enjoy you know eating with my hand yeah. than anything else yeah and i think it digest better yeah because because the senses are working properly ada pradana okay and palm jaggery oh wow. and we have served some coconut sorbet with it and that's a mille and in it you got the coconut and palm jaggery again so sir ragi like a kadbu yeah again see if you look at this concept here right ah uh. actually ada pradana ah uh. you know which we have converted like a pudding ah uh. and here we are using millet ah uh. in kerala they make something called elayada yeah elayada so we use the same concept right but we use millet and we have put the stuffing is typically that and we made a sauce with jaggery right so typically this would be steamed in a banana leaf correct so we have used the same treatment but but kind of push the envelope a bit again for experience and we have given a coconut ice cream because that is warm and mm. so sort of like that. and here kripal the baked yogurt so basically it is nothing but yogurt fruit mm. whatever the lychee here mango puree here and you know the palm thing. so what we have done is we have used that and baked it at a very low temperature mm. so you get the fruit and there is no sugar to it the sweetness is from whatever you put into it right so you set this yeah we make the ada pradhaman like ada pradhaman is made so that we have not compromised the pal you get my point yeah, yeah. and then you set it was with nothing or kuch with some wood agar agar ha that's mm. it mm. so out here is, is the earthiness of the uh, millet the millet correct that really correct so see this is the other thing the finger millet correct with the ragi it's a it's a staple that can easily overpower correct see ragi any millet huh. including ragi the challenge is one is what you said the yeah. two is it can have a bit of dryness to it yeah right because of the nature of it right that's why we serve that coconut ice cream uh, okay. the whole logic is that so that moisten the correct because we know that is going to happen so how do you kind of make it yet interesting uh -huh. right so we chose coconut because again ada pradhaman has coconut so keeping in line with so why is there a tinge of sourness in the coconut the uh, the tinge of sourness in the coconut that is because in the ice cream the ice cream it's it's is actually a, it's as more a sorbet than a uh, thing i mean the treatment is like a sorbet and always I think a bit of acidity, lemon. Yeah, a bit of acidity makes it kind of it enhances the flavor of the coconut. I think. Mm. This is a classic baked yogurt, basically. Correct. That's it. It's just a baked yogurt. Mm. Just fruit yogurt. I love the the lemon zest in this. Yeah. yeah. Again, because lychee can be mm. too sweet. Mm. So how do you cut that, right? This is a mango. mango. Parts of what we do may not be what you expect, or may not be what you know, or may not be what you are exposed to, or may maybe may not be even acceptable. Mm. But until you experiment, right? There is this space which nobody knows what it is. So you experiment with it. Then you figure it out. And you figure it out, and then you say, okay, you know what? How do I make it better? How do mm. I kind of? And, and 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 that's what I think we try to do. We mm. try to live. We try to live and learn. And we try to mm. also 
can you see how we can get to be better enjoyed the meal thoroughly Thank i mean you. it's been just uh, i've never eaten at koelon before this right so i've always wanted to eat at chef shri ram's fabled koelon it was like a fable <laughs> in fact you were journeying to the world of koelon and what better company than with the one and only uh, uh, i believe you're journeying into the world of culinary uh, and uh, chef shri ram uh, and koelon today it is an experience yeah, i'm i'm happy kripal honestly that you would come and experience what we do because i invariably meet you in bangalore and mm. we go eating out and you're always gracious me and thanks you always taken me out to experiment and experience new stuff and that's why i always whenever i meet you i say take me to a traditional place because those are the things that actually inspire mm. us to inspire me to think and understand and learn i think we uh, i think we should all be very hungry and very wanting to learn all mm. the time uh, and that's how we can kind of in our own profession get better and also hopefully also add a bit if possibly to the world of culinary fantastic the culinary world if we can amazing as my life is the visual art and i feel it. i feel that chef shiram's life is a culinary art mm. and i can see the last 20 years that this journey is almost 24 hours in a day mm. like if you leave past midnight and you will join early morning mm. So probably when he's, you know, going back to his house, he is thinking about his art mm. of Kulam. Mm. Fantastic. That should be the life story of any creative person in any field. Mm. Very well said. Fantastic. Well, the table is all set. This is where we're going to do our first ever food lovers meet up in London. at the bombay brasserie are you all set yeah yeah <laughs> hi hello namaskar kripal shraddha thank you thank you Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Shweta. Hi Shweta. Hi. Lovely to meet you. This Hi, is Shri. Nice so Davani ke andar bande dose. Yes. Ah, land of the bande dose. Namaskara. Inchal aur sama ulle tulu artha apundu padare sama parpuji. From Ireland. Hello. Telugu. Telugu. Oh my goodness. They they flew in from Ireland. Island is Ochem. So we just thought that this should be a little more special than the usual because Kripal has done so many shows. He's got some goli bhaje. He's got, of course, the ghee roast as well. So there's a bunch of things that he's got, and I hope you get to uh, relish most of what's on the buffet.